So we're going with big bait, like really big bait today. No rip chad 44 magnum from reef runner. And then it's all these wiggle sticks. Actually, I got a bunch of them already hooked up. This lake here, the south end, is nothing but a huge mud flat where the river comes in. So what you're dealing with is a whole lot of mayfly larva and stuff coming out. So all the little bait fish are in here eating those mayfly larva. And the walleyes are in here chasing those. So, so I'm not gonna go shallow and warm looking for all these itty bitty guys. I'm gonna go deeper and we might not catch a fish today, but we're gonna see if my theory works. If nothing else, we're out on the water, we're not at the office. The rest of the world's working. You guys are getting paid for this. I would have never thought that I could have a job where I'd get paid to go fishing. But anything works as long as it's perch colored in this lake. It doesn't matter what color you have as long as it's perch. Some people show up with blue and silver and that stuff. Oh, look at that. <laughs> There's no self-respecting walleye that isn't going to want to eat that. I don't care how big or how small he is. I've calibrated this to know that 100 feet on my reel is really 100 feet of line. So if you're going to try replicate the same pattern every time you catch a fish, you gotta have your stuff dialed in. Right there, six zero. So then, for those of you not familiar with planer boards, what this is, this is gonna pull this away from the boat. And so you can have one running out there, one right behind the boat, and you can cover a big swath of water. For right now, I'm just gonna put it out 20 feet from the side of the boat until I get the whole armada set up. I'm gonna just do the opposite on this side. I'm gonna put the 44 Magnum right in the prop wash, and then I'm gonna put a wiggle stick, a deep little ripper, out on the board. And if you start catching fish in one setup versus the other, if the first three fish you catch are all on that same rod, it's like, hmm, guess what? Maybe every rod should be set up that way. And you just adapt accordingly. <coughs> There you go, Marcus, I'll net him. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, welcome to it. Oh, I have to reel right-handed? Oh, man. Wait, you, okay. Oh, yeah. uh, not used to this. Oh. This is cranking him in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. Hey, that one looks, that's, that looks like a pretty good one. We might have to keep that one. Let me get the net. Watch out, don't be horsing them now. Let me see. Let me see. Hold on. Oh, get him over here, <laughs> <laughs> that's 13 inches. I was going to say, I'd eat that thing. In the well, that thing is going in the pot. Yeah, I'll eat that thing. See that? Folks, iridescent reef runner. Deep little ripper. Look at All that. Right, hold on, we got a hog trough here. We got to see. Oh, look at that, Marcus. You got 14 inches. I'd say that's an eater right that's there. That's 14 inches, my threshold. What if you would have lost that's that? Well, you said we don't need a net. Well, you got to yell at me when I'm wrong. <laughs> Chew me out. All right, look, we didn't even get the other rod set out. We already got, oh, I forgot to mark the lake one. <laughs> All right, that was no Lake Erie walleye, but damn it, it's all right. What do we got? Oh, I got to hit the lake one. Hey, hey, they're into them thicker and dirty, just like thieves here. Oh, yeah, I... <laughs> hmm, this one is 12 and a half. 12 and a half, all right. <laughs> I mean, give me some slack here. I'm oh, good with whatever Marcus. Wow. If Marcus eats 12 and a half, 13 inches, that's up to him. Well, you can keep 20 a day. True. <laughs> <laughs> How about that, folks, huh? Marcus is on the hot stick there. We might have to oh. replicate a, an eerie deary or a, a iridescent and. 60 feet of water with a deep little ripper. I'm getting out of the way next time. You gotta reel that thing in. Oh no, I've done this enough times. I'm, I'm used <laughs> to being the tender. When I'm in the boat, I'm the tender. I gotta take care of the dog when she's gotta pee. I gotta feed the dog. Usually what I'm doing is I'm reeling it in 
and then I'm trying to do the planer board and then I'm holding the rod over here with the net like that and I have a few nets in the bottom of reservoirs because of that but uh, oh you want here Dale <laughs> let me hit the waypoint we can't <laughs> so we've caught all three fish so far on this one don't don't lose them now Jeez, look at it. What are you trying to do? You've got to get another rod in the water. Oh, that's a, that's oh. the biggest one yet. Who just barely kept that one. Yeah. yeah. 13 on the spot. So what do you want to do? I mean, we can keep 10. I like eating them. All right. They're in the box. All right, that one was out at 60. So that rod has caught every fish. I think he got off. Oh, did you horse him? You horsed him. It was a big one. <laughs> he wasn't even big enough that he could eat it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we lost this guy. The three fish that we've caught and another one that got off, they were all on that rod with this right here, a deep little ripper and eerily naked. So, I'm dumb, but I'm not stupid. My thought is, I may as well swap this out and tune it just like the other one. this guy so uh just let me know if you do talk to him and uh oh. <laughs> i didn't even do anything okay sounds great joey yeah thank you bye <laughs> yeah, we gotta work with this salt water guy. Yeah. Yeah. Just certain, I was literally just you know, like a common, you common see him? theme. He with... had that thing jammed in his hip <laughs> and he's just like. You notice there's a common theme with who's reeling it in when the fish get off, too? <laughs> it was jerky. Uh, they might have lost it, but. <laughs> See? Holy Mackinac! Look at this thing! Woo! <laughs> yeah. There you go! Alright. I did not oh. think, I did not think there was a fish on there. <laughs> I he told didn't, you. Stop biting you. We caught the, the biggest the... fish of the day right here. I had to get it. <laughs> you don't catch for you don't catch fish this big in this way. Holy cow. Marcus, that's the biggest, that's the biggest walleye I've caught here in five years. I know. Big walleye don't cow. fight, man. See, that's what happens. I get on the phone and all of a sudden, fish <laughs> jumping everywhere. Sorry about that, Jody. I'm trying to take care of some CPA. <laughs> the audience is looking at me like, why is he talking on his phone? Well, I, I got to do some CPA work here today and pay for the gas these guys cost me here when we're out. I take them fishing. <laughs> Still there? No. Uh, it feels like it. Dang walleye don't fight. No, nope, they're like reeling <laughs> in a boot. <laughs> That's all right though. It'll be the best tasting boot you ever ate. Of course, it might be a carp. Oh. <laughs> oh no, it's a walleye. You got him hooked right on the top of the head. Huh? That's when you know you got a sharp hook when you can hook a walleye right through the skull. Dale finally didn't horse one in. Well, he couldn't lose that one. He had him hooked so hard in the noggin. That... All right. Get the nap. Oh, don't lose him now. What are you doing? Trying to lose them. Jeez, good thing I'm handy with the net. <laughs> You're the net guy. 
<laughs> well, you can't drag him up to the I was going to right him and him right, right here. Crap sakes. 14 on the dot. 14, all right. I got a, got a little bit ahead of myself. But he's, four, he's, 14, he's that's a, a tournament fish. Yep. Oh yeah, see? Good thing the limit's 20 a day or we'd be done most places. He's trying to surface. You gotta keep him down. Big one, very big one. There's your fillet there. Pull them way out there and then look a little bigger. <laughs> He's so big he can hardly. Look at all that displacement, all that water back there. You want to reel this, Dale, and I'll get the board. You'll get it in quicker than I will. It's Dale nice to blame it on someone else too Dale when you lose it. Around. When there's Dale. a fish on the line, man, that's just get with the program. Another 14 incher. Dang, oh, Dale, you're right. in pretty handy at this stuff. Well, guys, I don't know what to tell you, but we're going to pull up steaks. I'm going to do some gutting and gilling, and I don't know who's doing the cooking, but if we're going to do a catch, clean, cook episode, we got to give people something to hang around for. So I'm going to do the gutting and gilling. We're going to show people how you bleed your wall out. And then somebody's going to film the cooking part. So you get yourself a really super sharp Gerber fillet knife and you go into this live well and what you do is you grab these fish and I'm not a big fan of gutting a fish that's still alive so I bleed them. So a lot of people will make the mistake they'll bleed their fish by cutting right here and just cutting the gills. Well that cuts off oxygen. Whoop. That cuts off oxygen and yes they surely die. But if you really want to get them to bleed all the way out, what you do is you jab them right here in the heart. See that? All that blood coming out. That's how you know you got them in the heart. And you put them over here where they can swim around and bleed to death. And then you grab the next one. And then you do the same thing to him. Right there. So all you guys who want to give lectures about bleeding fish, you need to understand anatomy a little better. Well folks, here's what we do. We leave the live well filled, so we got water to rinse everything off in. You bring a box so you can put your guts and your carcass in there. And you bring your trusty folding fillet board. And you just grab your first fish. Right here, you see how he's lost all of his color? So, now if you want every bit of meat off a of walleye, this, these ones aren't big enough for cheeks, but you want to cut right there. And then, you want to cut down and go just on that side of the vent. And then you flip them over and come in right underneath this fin right here. Go down and up like this and you get a little bit more meat and then and I know a lot of you are going to say why didn't you leave that on the fish well because I like to do it this way and if you'd like to do it the other way that's good too So, and you just take right here where you cut the ribs, you make a little incision in there. You don't cut all the way through. A lot of people cut all that belly out of there and then you just make a crease there. And you go like this. And I'll try to show you what you end up with. 
still, you see all those bones that just came out of there? You get all the rib bones out without losing all of that meat right there. And a lot of times I cut it so close that I end up with a little bit of fin there. Because I'm trying to salvage all the meat. And all you do is... And I know some people are going to say, Hey Randy, you forgot to leave a section of skin on there? Montana, you don't have to do that, like in a lot of other states and provinces, so... So... You see how it got bled? You see how transparent that meat is? So tonight we are making a blackened walleye from the fish that we caught yesterday. So the first thing you want to do is clean the fish up really well with cold water and then put it on a towel, dry it off really, really well. After you dry it, you want to put a little lime juice on there, makes it nice. And then you want to get your seasonings. I like to use this blackened redfish seasoning. It's just something that I've used ever since I was a kid with making mahi-mahi or blackened redfish. And then after that, you're going to put some oil in a like cast iron skillet type of utensil. Heat it up to a medium type of heat. Get it smoking, which it's actually smoking behind me, so I gotta make this fast. So you're gonna have it smoking, or, or that oil to start smoking a little bit on that medium high heat. You're gonna put the fillets on there for two minutes on one side, Flip it over for two minutes on the other side. So then you're gonna to want to heat up your oven to 350. And after that, you're gonna put it in the oven for about eight minutes. And you should be good to go. Well, there we go. That is catch, clean, cook, for walleye that we caught yesterday. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and let us know what you think of the fishing content.